Hi everyone and welcome to the Hidden Door live show number six. Um, I'm David Martin and I'm your host uh, for the show. Well, actually, I'm going to be your co-host tonight because excitingly, I'm going to be sharing the hosting duties uh, with none other than very exciting Tess Letham, but more on that later. Um, in case you don't know, although probably most of you do, these shows are brought to you by the Hidden Door team. Um, Hidden Door is Edinburgh's alternative underground arts festival. Um, we try and put on a festival every year in Edinburgh. Um, but basically Edinburgh has lots of festivals, so we try and do it in a totally different kind of a way. We get hold of exciting derelict or disused buildings and we aim to fill them with art and music and theater and dance, film and spoken word and lots of bars. And that's really what the Hidden Door Festival is, um, except we had to take 2020 off. Um, so we're planning an incredible comeback in 2021. We've got our hands on a phenomenal, crazy venue, a derelict or disused building, the best one that you could possibly imagine. Um, and I could tell you all about it and it would completely blow your minds, but I'm not going to. I'm going to keep it a little secret for a little bit longer because I don't feel that you're ready yet. But we will be releasing details more of our 2021 comeback pretty soon. But in the meantime, we're doing these live shows and we thought it was really important during this time when so many things are shut down and that it was important to provide something to keep showing just what talent there is in Scotland, what people are getting up to, a way of sharing music, a way of sharing and uh, the performing arts. And this is why we're doing these shows. So um, basically, that's kind of what we're doing. And here we are um, with our sixth show in the series. This uh, show, we're focusing on dance. Um, dance is a relatively, it's relatively new territory for Hidden Door. Um, we had our first official dance program in 2018 in the Leith Theatre. Um, and we're really excited about developing the possibilities of the dance programme for our next Hidden Door Festival. So we thought we'd get a few dancers together uh, this evening and see if we could find out a little bit more, a little bit more about how dancers actually tick. But before all of that, um, I would like to tell you a little bit about well, what's going to happen on the show. Um, the dancers that we have, we've got performance by um, Chrissy Ardell, and we've got an interview with Sky Reynolds, and we have an interview and sh uh, bits of performances from Alice Wilkins, um, interviewed by our incredible dance program manager, Tess Letham. Um, so you won't have to put up with me doing all the show, because I'll be hosting it uh, or co-hosting it with Tess. Um, but before all of that happens, um, we're going to be having a little bit of live music. And tonight for this show, I'm really excited to say that um, our live music is uh, brought to us by Catherine Alley. Um, Catherine Alley, originally from Greece, now settled in Edinburgh. And there's a bit of a buzz beginning to form around her with four singles released and clutch collaborations under her belt. Uh, Catherine's beginning to forge her place in the Scottish music scene. Uh, she embarked on her solo career just in 2019, but since then has notched up a number of exclusive premieres for her releases, um, including with the Scotsman and the Scottish Sun. Um, and she's had more than her fair share of glowing reviews, um, being included in the Unsigned Guides uh, Spotlight for, I think it was May 2020. Um, she starred at Hidden Door before, um, and also at Kelburn Garden Party, uh, EH6, Tenement Trail, and many more. Um, she's been pretty busy during lockdown, doing various live streams, uh, while her singles have been gaining airplay, not just on the BBC, um, but also further afield in the USA, Canada, Europe, and Australia. Um, so not content with all of that, her striking looks have graced the pages of Vogue Italia, courtesy of internationally acclaimed photographer Yannicka Honey. And frankly, she is a very busy woman. So we are very lucky to have her here on the show. Let's get her on the screen. Uh, please welcome Catherine Alley. Round of applause. Hi, David. Hello, everyone. Hi. We're so excited to be here. I'm just still laughing at the striking looks. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Thanks for all the kind words. Well, I'm so excited oh, to be here. Oh, that's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's really nice to have you, Catherine, and your band. Um, how are you doing? Are you doing okay? 
We're doing great. Yeah, very excited in sunny Glasgow today uh, with Dimitris and Joe, my bandmates, so drums and guitar. Um, so I've, I've been here since quite early to set up and like do some jamming, some practicing and stuff. So that's really exciting. That sounds great. I'm really glad you've been practicing. Um, but also, it's really exciting that you guys are all like actually sharing a room. Um, this is the first time that we've had a real live actual band. We had a duo last time with Super Inuit, but now we're building it up to three. By the end of you know whatever few months' time, we'll have the whole like Tinderbox Orchestra or something. <laughs> but until uh, until then, three is pretty exciting for us. So um, you're going to play us. Um, you're going to do a couple of sets for us tonight. You're going to do one song for us now. And uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about what this song is? Yes, this song is actually its birthday this month. <laughs> it's one year old. It's the one that, that I released in 2019. It's called Sunny Days. And uh, it's actually very exciting because Chrissy, who's dancing later, was actually in the video, the official video of Sunny Days. So I was very excited to see her performing on the same night as I did because we've worked together. And uh, yeah, it's a song that was part of the initial trilogy that I released um, to introduce myself as a solo artist. And uh, it's just all about, you know, the balance of opposites, the love and hate in a relationship, you know, all the ups and downs, um, which we try to portray in many ways from dancing, as you'll see in the video, to like the major and minor swaps in the song and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm really excited to perform this kind of stripped down version of it today for you guys. Great. Well, just take it away when you're ready, guys. Thank you. Sunny days are ours. It's just you and me, and it's all a piece of paper. It's just you and me, and I'm told. Let my dream of heartbeats dance for you. Only
I was just muted myself. Thank you so much, Catherine. It's really great. It's sounding fantastic and exactly just the sort of thing we need right now. A um, bit of sunny days, a bit of bliss and a little bit of hope. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, I'm going to have a bit more from Catherine uh, quite shortly, actually. But just before we do, I thought we would um, break things up a little bit and actually introduce our first uh, dancer for this evening. Um, Chrissy Ardill is originally from Ireland and uh, now based in Glasgow. Uh, she performs and teaches many different kinds of movement disciplines, as well as choreographing for stage, film, TV, music videos. Uh, she creates work under the name Underhand Dance and is quite a renowned roller skater. Um, as well as um, feeling most herself with wheels on her feet, Chrissy is just as at home being suspended in mid-air. She's a renowned aerialist, choreographing and performing works suspended in the midair, taking the floor, which is, I suppose, a pretty fundamental part of most dance, um, completely out of the equation. We couldn't move fast enough to keep up with Chrissy um, on her actual roller skates, so we asked if she would actually provide a piece for us um, dangling, and so that's what she's going to do. Um, she's going to perform an aerial piece exclusively for us here on Hidden Door Live Show. Um, this kind of performance, working with a suspended hoop instead of a dance floor, um, allows the dancer to explore a wholly different set of movements, shapes, balances, contortions and rhythms um, that are impossible with floor work. Um, so we're really delighted to be able to show you this um, performance by Chrissy. Um, but just before we start, a little word of warning. Um, some of you might know that Facebook live streams are very sensitive to copyright issues around pre-recorded music and this performance features a pre-recorded uh, soundtrack and even when all copyright has been approved Facebook algorithms can still mess with the live stream a little bit so if the soundtrack becomes suddenly muted um, that will be why but hopefully it won't be and everything will be fine uh, at Hidden Door we believe in optimism uh, very much. In fact, we sort of depend on it. So hopefully uh, this will all be fine. And uh, without any further ado, take it away, Chrissy Ardell.
probably a good idea to cut it there um, rather than leave it running and try and watch Chrissy try and run in a straight line after doing that. She must be pretty dizzy. Um, absolutely incredible control. A masterclass in the conservation of angular momentum. <clears throat> but talking of momentum, I worked on that link. Um, someone who is building up a hell of a lot of momentum at the moment um, is Catherine Alley. So let's bring her back on screen. <laughs> hey, Catherine. So you've been pretty busy uh, over lockdown and things seem to be going pretty well. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been up to? Yeah, so when lockdown started, I was actually in the process of releasing another single, Misty Me. Uh, thankfully, a couple of weeks before lockdown, I shot a live video uh, of Misty Me with the guys here in Glasgow. So we had a lot of content to kind of use. And uh, so I released Misty Me uh, in April and uh, got buried in July. And then for Godbreed, I did an official video. Well, I want I want to call it an infrared cinematic, more like because we took a very artistic approach to it. It, it we didn't go for a, for an official music video. It was more like we wanted to make a visual kind of re, uh, representation of what the song is about. Um, so yes, I released another single then, and and I'm now in the process of starting to slowly try and see if I can do any. Um, small intimate kind of like live actual live shows with that are going to be very exclusive and stuff like that and you just I'm, I'm actually quite keen to see if people would go to very very small shows and stuff well you know because things are quite not stable just yet so um yeah i'm in the studio as well recording more more songs <laughs> to release uh, later this year and then next year so it's been quite busy yeah. Yeah. So, is it, so how would people find out about these um, potentially, you know, quite small live shows? I've actually announced that today. Uh, so it's on my Facebook page and people can sign up to get updates about what and where and secret locations and last minute announcements and stuff like that. Uh, so it's on my Facebook page. And if people can go there, they can sign up and find out about more. Wow, sounds really exciting. So I hope that goes really well. Good luck with that. And um, what we like to do, I suppose, on the Hidden Door Live shows is ask a little bit of our guests about how they do what they do. You know, not just listen to your performances, but ask you a little bit about your creative process. So I'm interested to know about you and, and kind of how you come up with your music and your ideas. Like, do you have a particular way of working or is there something that you do which kind of really helps you kind of come up with the creative stuff? Well, I just I usually just come up with melodies, to be honest. And uh, I have a notebook where I write all my lyric ideas and stuff like that. And then I kind of worked around the melodies I came up with. And then I can either do an acoustic version of what I have in mind and then go in the studio, or I might kind of create a, a demo at home and just like have an idea of how the drums are going to go, like the bass or whatever. Um, but the studio I work at, they have like a great, uh, they've got great equipment so everything I have in mind I can just go and do there and the most important thing is that I try to listen as much music as I can to educate myself and basically you know keep expanding my horizons and I go in the studio with a lot of references it doesn't matter if it's just for like a snare drum <laughs> reference mm -hmm. or whatever uh, just okay. a lot of references yeah can I ask you a bit about that? Because it does seem like your music, your musical oeuvre is very broad and you've definitely got a lot of you know, quite diverse influences in there. So can you tell us a little bit about your creative influences or kind of what's really getting you at the moment? Well, yeah, that's a tricky question because like, I don't think that my, re my influences directly reflect on my music. Like on the way here, I was listening to some electronic music and then some neo jazz and then some pop music. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I just I think uh, I think the one band that I really 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 love and you can maybe hear my music is London Grammar. Um, I really love this band, uh, but I love Jeff Buckley, Moby. I love um, Churches. I like I think Churches is quite show in um, in Godbreed. So I was told at least. Um, but like. You know, I, I think even metal music, <laughs> I, I like that as well. Like, I, I listen to as much as I can. Um, so people might not hear particular things in my songs, but there might be a beat that I'm like, ah, this is this is so much like this artist or, or whatever. 
but equally yeah. sometimes I get comments that are like oh this song reminds me of this or that that I've never I would have never imagined so it's I, I quite like thinking of myself like a like a puzzle of like many 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 different influences coming together that's cool and you're originally from Greece right mm-hmm and does any does any of that kind of culture play a part in your in your sound or in your music or your approach? Or Not yet. I mean, from what you've heard from my releases so far, no. But from what I've recorded uh, to release next, I think there are some elements there coming from like Eastern Europe and stuff, which I'm oh, quite man. proud of actually. I really because I've ha- I have yeah. this kind of type of music in my head anyway, so it's nice I can find manifest yeah. it anyway. And it's great to see you kind of really kind of building up what you're doing in in Scotland at the moment. And I was wondering, though, as I was thinking about it, can you imagine somebody in, from Scotland, almost the, the reverse of you, kind of doing something like this in Greece? Does Greece have enough of a scene or is a kind of vibrant scene that you could do that, do you think? Well, well that's a good question, because, uh, yes, you. I mean, it's like me asking, would you go to Scotland for the good weather? <laughs> Like, it depends on what you think a good weather is, you know what I mean? So, um, if there are opportunities, I suppose, uh, depending on what you want to do. But mainstream, the mainstream music scene in Greece is not, it's quite clicky. And it's, and you've got this kind of like, you've got people that are, that are musicians that are celebrities on top of, and everybody knows of them. And then you've got like, people that play in pubs you know you whereas in the uk you've got like uh people that you don't won't recognize in the street but they tour around the world you know what i mean so that doesn't really happen in greece as far as i know but i haven't been in ages so maybe things have changed now Uh, okay great um and you've been very active over the last few months you know you've released two singles you know since we're in lockdown which is fantastic and i'd say they're they're really great god breeds fantastic song i love it um, you've been generating a lot of content, a lot of activity online. Um, but how do you feel about being a musician in the UK right now? You talked about doing these tiny little shows. It's a bit of an experiment. I mean, do you feel that it's a kind of, do you feel excited by the challenges or do you feel overwhelmed? I mean, how do you just feel about it? Well, to me, I'm going to be 100% honest. It does get overwhelming because generally, you know, being creative for or for a living it's not the easiest thing you you want to pursue but um it's just so much insecurity on so many levels and so so much exposure as well that you just have to do especially nowadays with images just everything um so i feel like just everybody else you just have to adjust you know you just need to be more online now whether you want it or not and you just mm. need to stay creative in terms of like okay how can i engage with people in different ways now hence the whole uh, intimate secret secret location idea that we had me and my team about the live shows um i, I mean things were difficult anyway but that, that's what, what god is about actually and now with the pandemic i think it's like another level but you know what you just need to keep going if you love what you do you just keep you could just keep going fantastic catherine i love it um Let's talk in. Let's uh, let's hear some tunes. You're going to play a couple of songs for us. So um, why don't you tell us what the first tune is and then take it away. I'm very, very excited about the next tune because it's a cover, which we've never done before. And uh, we've prepared that especially for Hidden Door. <laughs> so super excited. You guys ready? Cool. Yeah. 
is actually the one that I used um, last. And I would like to dedicate this to the whole team of uh, Hidden Door, who've been so amazing supporting artists because this song is about how difficult it is to be an artist. So this one goes out to you guys.
Fantastic stuff. Thank you so much, Catherine and the band. Um, absolutely brilliant to have you on the show and really appreciate you dedicating that song to us. That's really nice. Um, well, as I said before, I am a bit of a part-timer and quite happy to be uh, farming out some of this hosting malarkey to somebody else. So I'm very excited to bring on a very uh, glamorous co-host, Tess Letham. Tess is um, not only a dancer and choreographer and teacher in her own right, um, but is none other than the Hidden Door Dance Program Manager, which is a crazy important job. And uh, she shot to notoriety in 2018 as a dancer that danced on the roof of the Leith Theatre. So uh, she's something pretty special. Let's bring Tess onto the screen. Hi. Um, hey. Hi, David. hey, Tess. <laughs> hey, how are you? Great. Thanks so much for having me on. This is super. Um, and oh, yes, what great problem. music, Catherine. Um, I was actually, Catherine was coming to some of my dance classes just before uh, we went into lockdown. So it was great to hear you singing and performing there, Catherine. Nice. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so Tess, what about you? How have, how have you been doing and what have you been up to recently? Um, well, not a whole lot recently, but actually today was my first day back at work and I felt like a bit like a school kid going back to work wow. um, for an outdoor performance project that I'm doing at the moment. So that was fun. So it was about five months. Um, yeah, bits and bobs wow. inside. Yeah. But um, yeah, first actual venture out to work today. So that was fun. <laughs> Listen, that's great. Look, I don't want to like you know rain on your parade, so I'm gonna just get out of your hair and let you take over from here. So, uh, yeah, take it away, Tess. Super. See you later, David. See you later. Hi, everyone. So good to be here. Um, so I'm really excited about um this dance portion of the Hidden Door live show today. Um. And um, we've got some amazing artists coming up. First, I'm going to introduce you to Miss Sky Reynolds. And Sky is a Scottish-based dance artist, performer, and performance maker and educator with 20 plus years experience working across the professional and community arts in the UK and abroad. Her practice is multidisciplinary, experimental and influenced by the politics of real life. She is concerned with developing and supporting creative sustainability and resilience. So let's bring on Sky. I'm so excited to have her on the show. Hi Sky. Nice Hi to Tess. See you. <laughs> hey, it's great we were to actually, see you. High we were, five. Can we do it? Oh no, it's this way. Oh no, it's this way. I'm very confused. <laughs> Wrong way. Like cut it. <laughs> so we messed that up. Anyway. <laughs> um so Sky is, I'll just like do a little introduction as well. Sky is a performer that once danced on the stage at the Latitude Festival and ended up doing a spontaneous solo in front of probably a crowd of thousands. So do you want to just start with telling a little bit of a story about that, Sky? Oh, okay. Um, hey, everybody. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a really, yeah, an extraordinary and exciting moment quite a long time ago when I was doing a project with Derevo, who are a Russian physical theatre company, who I, who I originally met doing a project through the Arches. And they invited me to be involved in one of their shows at the Latitude Festival. And uh, the director, Anton, had, had done this beautiful gliding across the lake. The stage was on a lake with a submerged pathway. And uh, I don't know if any, if any of you have seen it. And he glided across the lake and then he he danced on the stage and made the whole stage incredibly wet which meant the rest of us just had to like navigate this <laughs> sliding surface for an hour and then um they decided they, they told me they were going to do this they, they they retreated back and they left me in their glow I mean we've all been performing but the Derevo glow um and I danced around with it with a big piece of stick I think it was kind of um yeah I felt like I was flying it was exciting um beautiful night uh, everyone they all, they all came back on stage they came back across the lake um, the audience had jumped on their feet and um, we invited them onto the stage to tango with us which was really exciting until the latitude organizers freaked out and you know were worried the stage was going to sink so kind of like got everyone back off the stage but we were all just yeah very high ecstatic it was magical 
Nice. That sounds like a very memorable moment in your career. Thanks for telling us about that. Um, Yeah, just going back to maybe before we get started on some more current things, maybe going back a little bit more into your early career and if there was anything in particular that sort of changed or forged your pathway into into what happened, what happened through the years, it would be great to hear about something. Yeah, um, I guess I think probably the big thing that changed for me was I'd, I'd really been working physically most of the time. Mm. And that was my big interest, the body and training with interesting teachers and um, exploring what I could do with my body in different ways. And then in um, I was working with Imaginate as a dance artist in residence developing work for young people. And I was, I was over in Germany doing this European project and I, I was in a piece of one of the other choreographers okay. in we, we started using text. And as you know, Tess, um, and anyone else who's out there who knows me, I love to talk. <laughs> and uh, suddenly I was on stage texting and talking and it was like a revelation. I was like, oh my gosh, it's taken me this many years of doing dance to realize that actually what I want to be doing is moving and using my voice and writing. So that 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 was a change for me. That that probably happened around 2003. 12, 13, and I and I haven't looked back since then. It's it's informed all the all the work I do now. Nice, yeah. brilliant, fab, cool. I think we should bring some images up just to have a little visual of things. Um, Great. Yeah. So let's. Oh, there we're here. Hello, red <laughs> pants. Well, actually, um, the first thing I think of is being with Tess today, where we we were both back at work. Um, exploring a research project with Curious Seed, which we can perhaps give a little plug for at the end. And I was wearing those trousers, and that was a few years ago now that I was in that photo. So <laughs> they're still great trousers. Um, I think that photo is taken by our dear friend Brian Hartley. No, it's our dear friend Lucas Cow, and it's from Something Smashing, which is um, a improvisational performance platform, music and dance that I co-curate with Tess. And yeah, it's a great platform. Um, it brings together a lot of different artists from music, mainly the kind of jazz scene, but also a lot of other musicians and um, dance improvisation. And we've had physical theatre performers some spoken word artists. We run monthly until we did, until coronavirus. And um, in fact, it would be a fantastic hidden door event. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's that's from there. And that's also... Another one. I, 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 the screen's quite small, but I can think I'm surfing on Alma Linda Hovius, who actually set the event up with Graham Wilson originally, who's in the background with his saxophone. Uh, mm-hmm. That was at the CCA, and I guess Something Smashing has been part of the uh, groups of improvisers in Scotland that have been helping to expand the improvisation platform um, and to make it more accessible to broader audiences, we 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 are in sight responsive spaces and unusual spaces. And uh, yeah, anything you'd add to that, Tess? Or um, yeah, also maybe it's just that it's sort of very inclusive, so we can we bring in so many different performers all the time. I think there's probably been over 80 performers at this point now mm. over the last three years, and that's just always great to include yeah anyone who wants to come and try out spontaneous performance for a night um but obviously there's a little core group of us so um yeah this was at the cc i don't think i was there that year but yeah um nice photo great hopefully yeah that's that one's by chantel Guevara. And hopefully we, we have got another event planned. Um, we're being supported by the workroom in Glasgow um, with their Beyond Fund. So we don't yet know what shape that's going to take. Like all artists at the moment, we're not sure what live art's going to be looking like. It looks like this, doesn't it? But um, it will <laughs> once we get back into the, into the actual <laughs> the space. Yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> when you're not sure which way you're looking yeah um <laughs> great let's move on let's go to the next some of the next photos and see um some more current projects that you're doing just now that would be great to see um can you bring up the next photo oh la la Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness what's going on here um oh, so more. this is yeah that 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 kind of segue is interesting because um the fellow 
uh, Kamlane Hasakta, who is in that photograph with myself, he is the choreographer that, that introduced me to working with text uh, in yeah. Germany back in 2012. He was also part of this European program. And we'd been wanting, he created a piece called What Do You Expect, which was really an exciting piece. We did it in Sweden and in London. He's, he lives in Sweden. And um, and we'd wanted to work together since then. Um, and we thought we would do a project on mothers and daughters. And that never happened. And this happened instead. <laughs> and uh, he's not my daughter. Um, but we, we ended up, we, we were really fortunate to have some support over last year. Uh, we, we, we started in Sydney in Australia. We were supported by Critical Path to have a residency. We had a um, couple of weeks with the workroom and we, we did some work in Sweden. And we, we became really interested in the original mother, uh, the universal mother, different, different ideas around that. We, we did get a little bit... Um, we got a little diverted by Eve. I know there are very many other creation myths that include women and the matriarch, but we got steered into historical visual art and looking at females and how they were represented, and particularly the female nude. And we had a lot of thoughts about that. So we started doing research into um, embodying some of these very passive characters and um, as contemporary artists seeing what, how we could respond to and um, enliven this kind of topic. So we, um, that's what we're doing at the moment. We, we, we had our first sharing in December. We didn't start out to, to make a nude piece, but um, yeah, I'm really proud. We went through quite a, like a, yeah, it happened. And we went through a really sensitive and intimate process together and it just, it just happened organically. And I've never performed nude before. I think I've taken my clothes off once in a, in a, in a show where everyone took their clothes off briefly. Um, and it felt very natural and quite empowering. We, we, we've been looking to punk and protest and um, we had the, basically the piece, the main conceit around the piece is that Cam Lane, I, I'm, I'm the birth of Venus uh, on him and, and he, he rolls forward and I navigate myself around his body as he rolls mm -hmm. and we, we bring to life some of these um, nude characters from the Renaissance era and then we, we, we arrive in the present day and we start doing some other things like that. <laughs> Great. Yeah, there's another photo of that. Yeah, perfect. Looks good. Nice. I love that image. It's so interesting. Yeah, we cropped it especially for you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So what are your plans with this next? Or have you got any plans or is it just sort of for the... Uh, our plans are to attempt to overcome my my um, procrastination at writing artistic applications. Yes. And uh, we, Cam Lane is, is, is a master of this. And Great. The, the Sweden has a very different system to us, which is actually really interesting. They, they apply to different funding bodies for different funds and altogether the fund helps the project become quite large and also realized in different ways. Okay. So he's busy with that. And I'm gonna, yeah, I'll make an, a, a smaller application for a couple of weeks research in the UK to help the Swedish application. And also, cause we have a bit of support here from the barn and, and a residency in Newcastle so, so I hopefully nice I ho yeah we hope hopefully to come we'll get, here yeah at some point yeah, yeah I hope you okay. will great let's uh I think we've got one more image let's bring that up oh wow I love this one so much it's so interesting yeah go ahead tell us a little bit about this yeah um well I'm interested in what tell me what interests you about it I just love the image. It looks like something like the Last Supper or something in your, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the painting of the Last Supper in your, the feast. Yeah, this is um, a really personal and important project to me. It's uh, it's called Alive, and it was it, it came about when I was in residency with uh, my co-creator and collaborator Susan Warsford. Mm -hmm. um, we're up at City Moves and we were in the dissection rooms, which is the original room where bodies were dissected by medical students who were part of um, Aberdeen Anatomy Department. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and at the same time, my dear friend and colleague Janice Claxton, who you know, who actually, um, her work performed at Hidden Door in 2018, she was in the last stages of uh, terminal cancer. And uh, so I was going through this this uh, process at, at the time. I think she passed away about 10 days after this residency. And um, this this uh, this kind of somatic experience was happening about what what is the living body at, that is also simultaneously dying as we are 
also in an in a dissection room where real bodies were being taken apart and uh, the piece evolved from that um, that concept and we brought it to life in different ways we we showed it at um, dance live last year and it's it, we want we, we want to do some more development on it um, and collaborate with the Aberdeen University anatomy department so we're, we're kind of organizing all of that at the moment okay. um, and that's really what it's about it, it explores um, it explores an actual anatomical dissection. So I describe that, but I also go through the somatic journey and how our bodies uh, hold so much. They hold memory and um, personal experience. And then it, it sort of becomes a celebration. We all sing a song together. I, 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 I sing my own funeral jukebox at the end. Um, Great. It's quite, yeah. Wow. That looks really powerful. Uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing that one too at some point. Nice. Yeah. Fab. Um, cool. Just to sort of um, end this up, um, I know, thank you so much for explaining all of these different things that you're doing at the moment. It's really interesting. Um, but yeah, just as a last question, how are you sort of feeling about um, live performance at the moment and what the future holds with everything going on? Yeah. And if you have any hopes for maybe some changes in the sort of artistic dance field. Um, yeah. Um, I think that there's been so much happening politically whilst we've been in this kind of lockdown and uh, pandemic situation that I, I know for myself as an artist, it's really, uh, it's inviting me to question what my values are moving forward and what, what I want to bring to my work. And um, I'm hoping that artists are going to have had an opportunity, despite all the insecurity, for us to really think about um, how, how we are in the world, what, what kind of work we want to make, how how we want to get it out there. I, I love that Hidden Door is creating its own festival. It's like it's in, it's bringing artists together in new and different ways. And I, I hope there's going to be more of that, more more work in in spaces that are um, sort of chosen by artists to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. So, but we should and we should give a little plug for. Um, oh yeah. For, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Go ahead. Talking about, well, just thinking about other spaces, um, and we are Tess and I are both part of a an outdoor durational practice, which is a research project that will become something um, more performative in the future with Curious Seed, and it will be on Holyrood Park. Uh, if it, we hope it will be on the thirtieth of July, it's an outdoor, socially distanced piece. Um, of of real live movement and dance. There might even be kites, and we hope that you, you will come. Um, yeah, super. Yeah, it's the 30th of August. Sorry. So, oh, sorry. You're yeah. behind. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. That is so great. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. It was really great to speak to you. Um, Thanks so much yeah, we'll for see. inviting me. And I, and I love Hidden Door. I think it's I, – I was just saying to Tess that um, I first saw my daughter dancing at Hidden Door when she was about five or six. And it's she's watching tonight from Amsterdam. And um, it's, a, it's a story I've told her lots of times. So um, Hidden Door holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> that was a very nice outro. Mm. Thanks. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Super. Um, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to move on to our next special artist, which is um, Miss Alice Wilkins. Um, and Alice is a very good friend of mine, so I'm very excited to have her on, as well as Sky. Um, so yeah, so Alice has eight years international experience in the art industry. She is a dancer, choreographer and performance artist. Alice is a versatile mover whose training started in contemporary dance and later she completed a postgraduate certificate in physical theatre um, and that was through Jasmine Vardaman Company. So Alice appeared not so long ago on uh, Channel 4's Flirty Dancing. Don't know if anyone saw that show. Um, it was very fun. <laughs> And most recently was singing on BBC's Love Song. So that's another little segue of different career change. Nice. Her solo work welcomes you into her wonderland where she explores the struggles with dating, dreams, desires and the often unrealistic notion of happily ever after. So let's bring on Alice. So we were actually, hi Alice, so nice to have you on. Thanks for joining us. We were actually supposed to have a full live uh, performance of Alice's solo work, 
But because of Facebook's algorithm robots and what we were talking about earlier, we can't show the whole thing tonight, um, but maybe at some point in the future. So keep keep watching. Um, but we are going to show some clips and have a little chat about the work as well. So I think that's, you know, just as good. <laughs> um, so, yeah, welcome, Alice. Um, Thank you I love you. your um, outfit there. So that's Thank actually the the wedding dress that appeared that appears in the solo is that right and you Correct, have a yeah. you have a good story about that why don't you let yeah us know. kind of I mean I got this dress um in a charity shop it was a random purchase I was in the northwest highlands in Ullapool at the time working as dance development officer mm. um and it was a bit of a lonely period in my life I was up there um <laughs> I was single and <laughs> I went to go I used to go to this charity shop quite a lot anyway one day I went in and the dress was there and it was very cheap and I thought that looks like a great costume piece thinking potentially for Halloween right yeah so then I take the dress home and put it in the wardrobe and don't think too much more of it this is in the summer <laughs> then a few weeks later um Flirty Dancing had their call out like um for this dating dancing tv show with Ashley Banjo and I was thinking I need something to spice my life up a little bit. I've never attempted reality TV before. Mm. And I thought, now's maybe my time. And also, I like the idea of potentially finding a love at first dance. <laughs> um, right. So when, when I came to do, do the application and the interview process, I was trying to think of like interesting stories about myself that might make me stand up against other people. So this is where there's a little bit of a white lie. I kind of used the wedding dress in the cupboard um, to the producers of the show, just giving the secrets away, <laughs> that, um, that really I was this character almost that was like sat in Scotland, in the Highlands, in the rain, with a wedding dress <laughs> waiting for Mr. Wright. Um, <laughs> and yeah, the story got me on the show. So the yeah. wedding dress is a part to play in that. Fab. It's a good story. I like it a lot. That's how it started. Yeah, that's how it started. Let's move on to talk about the the solo that we were going to see a little bit of, um, and how it was sort of developed, and how you, yeah, how did you, when did you start first first started working on it, and then um, um, how has it grown since then? So the dress was with me, and I began to think about the dress, um, as if like I was thinking someone maybe wore this on their wedding day, and it mm. like it's quite strange to have someone's wedding dress on and um, yeah um and so I did put it on and try it on obviously when I got home and moved around in it and you do fit you I move differently when I'm in it and I feel differently mm -hmm. um and that's where the idea kind of sparked from I was like I want to take this into the studio basically and see what what I can create um and I was given residency at Perth Theatre um for a couple of weeks and that was about a year and a half ago now maybe a little bit under that um, and for two weeks, I played around with movement um, to begin with and then layered on top various mm. things, a bit of text, a bit of, yeah, playing with music, stuff like that. Great. At the end of the two weeks, I did a sharing. Um, it was like 10, 15 minute sharing, um, which was quite abstract. Lots of ideas I just pulled together. Um, and then this year, coming into lockdown, so I put it to bed for a while and then this year came into lockdown and um, those feelings that I had in Ullapool kind of were coming back to me. I'm sat in this room, there's not much happening for me. Um, and I thought, right, maybe I'll get the dress back out of the wardrobe and put it back on and rework that solo in this space, which is my mm. bedroom. Um, so it became more of a site specific piece. Um, mm. I used bed, um, there's my windowsill type thing up here um and yeah created it for the platform of the screen like zoom or skype um again that changed like the intention of certain bits and stuff and yeah i put together this little snippet that we can yeah have a look at. let's go to the video and see the first clip and have a look great Some of these ideas Everybody's free. 
Yeah. Well, that was quite a, a range of emotion in a very short clip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you let us uh, know what was going on there and what the intention was behind that specific sort of movement section? Yeah. So there's, I, I won't go into too much detail because I could talk for a long time about all of this. But I think to sum it up, um, the, the idea of being in love, particularly that first falling in love mm. time, you experience quite a roller coaster of emotions um so I try to express that physically and like ex- through my expressions mm-hmm. um and I would say that sometimes the expectation of true love isn't always what it seems and there is this almost like pain I think you can't experience love without pain so mm. I tr- I'm playing around really with those two extremes and created that little section of dance um yeah popular music and also um, I've studied and trained quite a few popular styles as well so I'm trying to fuse that into my into my movement in this particular piece as well so the music choices nice great let's go to the second clip and have a chat about that Wow, that's such a strong image. That that's really great. Yeah, what was happening here? Um, okay, so I love. I actually love this image. Um, just love it myself. Um, it came from the idea of Alice in Wonderland falling down the rabbit hole, um, and again that that kind of idea of falling in love. Um, and then also, I do like playing with words a little bit. And do you know how people say, "Oh, I'm head over heels in love." Mm-hmm. Um, I like the, I I came to me just one day, I was like, oh, it's kind of like funny if I do like heels overhead, like a headstand. And then also on that particular clip, I'm in a headstand. And to be fair, I am like relying on the wall there for a bit of stability. But when I did it in the studio, I was in that headstand for like seven minutes or something, quite a long time. So there's like this um, real control that you have over yourself. And then later on in the piece, there's this out of control section and I'm falling over the dress and it's just that again trying to pull those two tensions of movement yeah that super. Are like a metaphor for for love <laughs> yeah <laughs> super great let's go to the last last video I love the little cheeky smile at the end of all that extravagant, <laughs> crazy movement. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah, you were talking about extreme, so it's definitely a change, change of. Yeah. So that's crazy section, and I guess I just want to mention as well a little bit is just that that smile for me. I think a lot of people can relate to this. I. It's for me. It's because when I worked at Disneyland, every day for two years, I had that Disney smile, and it's quite a unrealistic expectation of yourself to pull it out the bag right but I do think that in general a lot of people in relationships or in other areas in their life have that as like a coping mechanism like pretending that that's everything's okay and it's very surface level and then beneath the cracks obviously that's not true is it all the time um and so yeah that's part of this process as well in this piece great cool um and just lastly what do you sort of envision for the future are you gonna keep developing the work maybe think about showing it live are you gonna stick to online stuff I mean where do you want to go with it so I'm I'm happy so actually I'm kind of wanting to step out of the wedding dress Mm. and give it to somebody else and me to be on the outside and be that outside eye and to direct it and really look at it now and yeah work on things rather than at the moment when I'm in it it's it's quite difficult for me to do that as you probably know from your own experiences um so that's the next step for me in terms of it being in real life or in virtual life I'm not sure I like it on screen and I like what I could do with that but I do miss some of the other stuff that Mm. I could bring and the space obviously and stuff that I could do in the studio so 
yeah I'm not 100% sure yet with that but we will see yeah it's interesting isn't it that we might all end up having sort of two versions of different performances for like <laughs> the virtual world and the live performance oh world, yeah depending um, on yeah. what this happens <laughs> Nice. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Alice, and thanks oh, for thank joining you. us the video. It was really great to have you on and, um, yeah, hopefully have you back soon. Awesome. Thank you very much and thank you to Hidden Doll for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Great. So that's us for the dance section of the live show tonight. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in. It was really great to speak to the artist involved. Um, so thanks again, Sky and Alice, for joining us. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you maybe on a stage somewhere soon. We'll see. <laughs>